Awo, Shabbat Shalom, Sembet Salam. This is the sixth, the sixth uh, Shabbat, and also the sixth, sixth Shabbat since the Simchat Torah, since the joy of Jah's law. So I and I take joy in the law of Jah, Jah Rastafari of His Imperial Majesty and in His glory, which is the Bible. And if you take joy within Jah's word and in, in the teachings of His Majesty, then you too may study and learn much from this particular Torah portion reading and feeding that is the sixth one that's known by Moringa as Tuladim. Tuladim, or in the modern force Hebraic as Toledot. 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 We're going to get into this right now. So grab your pen and your paper. Grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and bring a willing and a attentive mind within the regenerated spirit of the King of Kings and His Christ. And come and let's study together. Let us ground. Let us reason. Let us reason together on the RSS. The RSS number 6. This is the 6th Shabbat. Bamarinya is known as 2 Lid and we say 2 Lidin. Let's put this up here again, right here, as to the dim, to the dim, or T-W-L-D-N-N, T-W-L-D-N-N. Now, there's something known as a, a schwa, or, or, or schwa, 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 uh, a schwa, which is the... Six order Bamarinya in the Hebrew is a a, a a syllable or a continental sound which doesn't have an English, a proper really English um, correspondence. Now in phonetics they use different letters and different ways and different transliterations. But what we prefer is the basics. And this is a part of the uh, Amharic Bible homeschooling and the teaching those who are truly interested in the pure language will suggest that they um, acquire some of those materials, some of the free materials online, as well as some of the other materials for a donation and a free offering that concerns our pure language as per Zephaniah chapter 3, um, verses uh, 7, 7 and 8. And the Amharic is the pure language. We're coming off a new, a new document, and we look forward to sharing it with you. And it's actually based on this prophetic word and to explain the language and the key of language. Most of you are knowing how to make a slave in the Slick Willie, the Slick Willie Lynch papers. In the Slick Willie Lynch papers, how to make a slave, language was targeted. They targeted the old slave master bastard, you know, a targeted language. Language was one of those keys that was used, or one of those locks, one of the keys that was taken away from us. And here in Zephaniah chapter 3, verses actually, you could, uh, verses 9 and 10, verses 9 and 10, verse uh, 7 says, I said, surely thou will fear me, thou will receive instruction so their dwelling should not be cut off. However, I punished them, but they rose early and corrupted all their doings. It's interesting because he says, first he offers, you understand, uh, to receive instruction. He says, we should, re we should reverence Mephrat, you understand, even Teferi, Tefara, you understand, him, and would receive, receive instruction. Now, instruction for us is Torah is Torah. So this is the Torah portion reading and feeding. Bamarinya, we say Orit, you understand, which is this right here. You understand, so this is Torah. Torah is instruction. So put this down right here, instruction. So when you're reading in the translation, you understand, when you're reading in the translation, 
the King James particularly, when it's about instruction, especially with in relation to John's word or the scripture, the B-I-B-L-E, it is Torah, usually, that's being referred to. Now, we can touch on some of the mystery, uh, even from, from ancient Egypt, concerning the Taweret and so forth and so on. But we're not to reveal the mysteries to Kahadi Woj and to infidels. This is something, you know, there, there are... There are places and, and times for that. What we're focusing on now is, is the basic instruction. You understand? The basic instruction before liberating Ethiopia, the B-I-B-L-E or the Bible. All right? So here in Zephaniah chapter, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, just speaking on our language and the, and the, importance, the importance of us learning, learning our language, the importance of us learning our language, the royal Amharic, this is part of the prophecy as well, too. It says, for then I will turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord or the name of Yahweh or in the pure language, to serve him with one consent. So that's another uniting the, our language even the study of our language, you understand, and the desire to learn the language, a sincere, faith-based desire. Because, see, unless it's faith-based, one will find many difficulties and, and even might um, be dissuaded, you understand, dissuaded if they approach from a secular, worldly way. But in our faith, and along with these studies of His Majesty, the learning of the language is attainable because it's part of that blessing, it's a part of the fullness, the, the, the spiritual gift, you understand, that is given to us. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Then it says in verse 10, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, of Ethiopia, from beyond the what? Why does it mention Ethiopia in that connection? What happened beyond the rivers of Ethiopia? Beyond the rivers of Ethiopia was the slave trade for I and I. That's what was beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. When we went beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, we went from East Africa to West Africa, and we should know what happened to our ancestors in West Africa. But it says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. Shall bring mine offering. Now, this all is speaking towards the kingdom blessing and the remnant of the Beta Israel of I and I. So the language is very, very important, and the Amharic, the royal Amharic of Negus and Neges. It is very, very important. So now, let's continue with this sabbatical reading and feeding, and this particular sabbatical reading and feeding to the dim for a, a, a help. So if one needs a little help in reading this, if you write an I, you understand, and another I here, and another I here, almost equidistant space, to the dim. So one, two, three, two, ladim. Now the 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 meme here actually is the and part. You understand where when it's speaking right here in this portion, which is consists of Genesis chapter twenty twenty nine verse nineteen to Genesis twenty eight and nine, where it says, and these are the generations of Yishak, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Yisahak. Abraham begot Yisahak. So let's go to the Metaf Kedus, to the book of the seven seals. And these are the seven seals of the book, which say the Metaf Kedus, right? His Majesty's Bible. So here in chapter 20, 25, 25 and um, 19, Let's go to 25 and 19 and, and read that verse so you can hear the name of this particular sabbatical portion in the pure language. 25 and 19. 
Genesis 25 and 19. You could uh, in the wrong book. Uh, let's go right here, 25 and 19. Okay, here we go, 25 and 19. It says, that's in my eye, what the to do, so how do I'm like? Ye Abraham lich, ye Yisahak to ledim, no. Abraham Yishakin Wellade. So it begins off Ye Abraham Lich Ye Yishak to Ladim and the generation of Isaac, the son, the Lich of Abraham. Next line Yishino. This it is Abraham Yishakin Wellade. Abraham, he begot, he begot Yisahak. He begot Yisahak. So this is the beginning. Let's put this over here for now. This is the beginning of this particular sabbatical portion, this reading and feeding, the sixth of our Rastafari Sabbath studies and groundation on the Metzav Kedus and the Torah. Now, this is a, a book that we compiled. This is a compilation book from some of the other available materials out there concerning um, the Jewish, the Jewish uh, um, interpretations, some of the Jewish interpretation and studies on Torah. Now, we have a disclaimer, basically, and we'll, as before we even read from this, we'll just share with you part of our disclaimer on this, but still also explain why we feel this is very important. The views presented in this volume are not our own and do not necessarily reflect the Ethiopian Hebraic interpretation of the Old Testament or the Ethiopic or Rit Torah in particular, but is being compiled here into these five volumes, and this is the first of it. Nevertheless, this study, this particular study, and these volumes have been compiled by the Lion of Judah Society and are designed for the brotherhood of the Ras Teferi, disciples and Ethiopian Hebrew faithful, to get better acquainted, to be, get better acquainted with the primary and prevailing opinions and teachings as well on Judaism and the interpretations of the Hebrew Bible, of the Hebrew Bibles. Now, along with that particular book for, for disciples for study, we recommend this particular book. And this is the Lion Jew Society's version of the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minulik, according to the translation by Wallace Budge. And now we also have available the goods for those who are of the necessary acumen. One can order the goods and actually compare the translations. And based on our con comparisons of Wallace Budge, sir, Wallace Budge, he, he held a, a, a star of Ethiopia, um, I think it was a third, third uh, class, you know, so he received certain due commendations from the King of Kings, and his translation is in some ways like unto and even better than the King of Ch Kings, than, than, the, than King James, than King James translation. You understand then the King James translation, his translation from the Gutters of the Kubra Neges. But it's on that same old English and you could to, to my father for that for that for that slip of of um that, that that slip right there. But anyway it was corrected in the spirit and in truth. So this is also used by I and I as well. And just a little bit on the reasons for this, as the Jews or other Jews, OJs and others, they have their particular um, religious and um, scriptural Bible commentary from their saints and sages and so forth and so on. So do we have our own root and truth. When the prophecy says that every man will sit under his own vine and fig tree, you understand, and let everyone go and and and. and you know, walk in the way or worship their own gods, but we will worship in the way and walk in the way of our God, sitting on our own vine and fig tree and, and drawing water 
out of our own cistern, the cistern which is a drinking place, you know what I'm saying, cistern, Old English. But this right here also has some interesting and, u and, and useful, um, and useful uh, um, ancient teachings for us. This is why in our commentary and description in the back, a little bit of what we said about this is that this is a complete English translation of the famous Ethiopian work of Kibbutz and the Guest, The Glory of the King's, of Ethiopia, which is not a translation, but more a, a trans interpolation in that sense, because literally it will be the glory of kings, but the context is the glory of the Ethiopian Hebraic Solomonic kings to explain the proper context of it. This was compiled by an Ethiopian priest who translated into Ge'ez, the liturgical and holy language of the Ethiopic church in and around the 6th century A.D., from and based upon much older material, mainly in Coptic, the language of ancient Egypt. The Kebra Neges is a remarkable mixture or fusion of pre-Masoretic biblical texts, Hebraic legends, and African Judeo-Christian traditions, some historical and some of a mythic quality. Well, really, we could have also said a mystical quality as well. But a lot of the mystical and the mystery, the mysteries contained or is sealed up in a parabolic way in the so-called mythic and mythology, derived from the Old Testament manuscripts and the later African, originally it was African rabbinical writings, and from Egyptian, both Kamo Shemitic or Semitic and Hebraic Christian, Arabian, Mohammedan, and indigenous Ethiopian um, sources. So some of this material is reflected also elsewhere in other uh, religious traditions of other um, ethnic um, relig religious traditions, like other, among the Jews, but originally a lot of the rabbinic traditions or writings were actually of the African or the, the black, the original ethnic Hebrews who were black originally before the converted, the Khazars and Jebusites and others converted to our way, which was good for them. You understand? But we, our people, went astray, which was bad for us. Now is the day of the restoration of all things. You understand the time of the restoration of all things. So let us get into some of the basics on this sixth um, sabbatical portion, reading and feeding, and quote a little bit from this uh, companion. This will be the sabbatical companion, the first, the first of what we hope would be five books in this particular series. And here it says, Tolodot or Toldot or Toledot, is various ways that it has been um, it has been written. So, according to the Hebrew, or the four smart in Hebrew, it can either be said as tole dot or as tol dot or as tol dot. So there are three different ways in modern. Hebrew or modern um, fourth Hebrew in which it's said. But now when we go to our Ethiopic root, we can really see the more proper way of saying it. It would be as t-w-l-d or t-w-l-d, which is this part is the main word. This part is the, the mid, the suffix part is a suffix conjunction. And that suffix conjunction from the Metaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, the Matthew Bible, would mean and generation, and the generation. And in the King James, that part begins off, and these are the generations. But the root word is tulid, tulid. So we could write it tulid or tulid like this, or we could even add some stroke there or do like they did with the E, tilde, this is why they have, this is T, W, contract it, make to. So the T, W, when you contract it, it can be to or in some versions, to as well. So to and to, li, dot, 
and here I think they say tol and they have an apostrophe right about here where it will be tol dot. So you can see essentially the primary letters, the T, the L, the D, T, the L, the D, the W, or the W, the Huawei being hidden or contracted here into the T. But if you look at the Hebrew, the Hebrew still has the W. The Hebrew still has a W. It's just that the modern force Hebrew of the nowadays Jews or the latter day Jews, the European Jews, they have seen it as this. This is how they receive it, as either or of these three. But for us, it is basically simple as Tulidim. Tulidim or Tulid. Tulid, which means generation. So this is speaking about the generations. This is the generation. Now, the overview, let's go to the overview right here on page uh, 348 from our study companion for the sabbatical, sabbatical readings and feedings. It says that the Hebrew for generations or descendants. In other words, if you remember the reading from the Amharic, where it says, Welede, Welede, Welede is the root of Tule. He who Welledes, and the Welede from the Welede to the Welede, all of those who have been um, Weluded or have been begotten become the Tule, becomes that generation or descendants. Now, in the Hebrew, it's the second word and the first distinctive word in the Padasha or in the Kuf, the portion is the sixth weekly Torah portion or the parsha, according to the Hebrew. For us, it's the sixth uh, kifl or part in the annual Hebraic or Jewish cycle of Torah reading. It constitutes Genesis chapter 25, verse 19 to Genesis chapter 28, verse 9. Now, Hebrews and, and Jews or Orthodox religious Jews in the diaspora read it on the sixth Shabbat or Senbet after the Simchat Torah, after the joy of the Torah, which helps to inaugurate the new year and the new cycle, the new yearly cycle of Torah readings and feedings. Now, the, the clockwork is the heavens. The clockwork is the heavens. And that's the issue we've spoken on before, but it's important to understand that in our present situation in the city, the bright lights and everything, we're not able to, to, to see this great miracle, you understand, of our God Father, you understand, of the Almighty for us because we, there's all these distracting lights, so forth and so on. But it's important for us to understand that because when we are in the proper environment, ones will be able to see how all this will manifest in creating that foundation for community for common unity, for progress, for growth, and for development. I mean, even to some degree, and to their credit, the other Jews, they demonstrate that, especially the religious Jews and the kibbutzes, you know, the kibbutzniks and the rest of them, so forth and so on. We can learn something from those who have sought to be faithful and true. In fact, even Yahweh's word said that that is part of the prophecy as well in this time. So generally, it's read in November or early December. Now, as we apologize before about, you know, having to put some of these pictures here, but let us, you know, let us be, as Matt says, um, 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 broader in spirit, more noble. Let's be more, let's be higher. So we recognize for them as European people, they put a lot of European pictures. Give us some help and assistance because we also need artists for the newer pictures you understand, and the redo pictures to really tell the story more accurately for our people, especially the children. But this is now dealing with Esau, Esau and Jacob. This first portion is dealing with the generations of Yitzhak, begins off with the generation of Isaac, as well as the birth of Esau and Jacob in verse 24. And then we go to the sale of the birthright the sale of the birthright. So the first aspect of this reading and feeding concerns Yitzhak, Isaac. He was 40 years old when he married Ribka, when he married Rebekah. And when she was proved barren, and when, when, when it seemed to be that she could not bear or did not bear children, 
Yishak, he pleaded with Elohim, Baruch Hu, bless be he, on her behalf, and Ha Elohim, Hashem, Baruch Hu, bless be he, he allowed the Rebekah to conceive, according to Genesis chapter 25, verses 20 to 21. Now, twins were born. Well, first of all, twins, before they were born, Rebekah, she got to know that there were twins struggling, struggling in her womb. They were wrestling with each other. They were fighting in her womb. And so she inquired of Hashem. She inquired of the name Ha Elohim, the true God, Baruch Hu, who answered her that there were two separate nations. There were two separate peoples, nations that were in her womb. One would be mightier than the other, and the older one would serve the younger one. The one who was older, the one who came out first, would actually be a servant to the younger. Now, it's interesting when we compare some of the aspects, even ethnic and racial aspects from the Canaan, the Canaan part of our servant, servant as well, with the what's about to happen here with Esau in Genesis chapter 25, verses 22 to 23. Now, when Rebecca, or Rebecca, when she gave birth, the first twin emerged red and hairy. So they named him Esau, or Esau, Esau, named him Esau. And his brother emerged holding Esau's heel, so they named him Ya'iko, because he held his older brother's heel, they named him heel grabber. They named him Ya'iko, Genesis 25, verses 24 to um, 26. Now, according to the scriptures, Yishak was 60 years old. He was 60 years old when they were born, according to Genesis 25 and 26. Let us just check something out right here, just to make sure that this is, this is one and the same, because sometimes we've noticed there'd be an age difference between the King of Kings, Metaf Kedus, or some of the patriarchs, and then we check it out and find out that in some of the older Septuagint and some of the older scrolls, is that way, and sometimes even in the Hebrew, it might reflect that, but King James would be a little bit different right there. So we just want to make sure that truly he was six, 60 years old. It says, Kaziyam the Khala Wendamu Weta, the Ijuma Ya Isawina Terekeza Yizonebur, Simuma Ya Ikoba Tabale, Arswa Le Jochina, the Welle Chacho Gize. Yishak Sitsa Ahmet Honot Nebur. So he was, he be, you understand, he was 60 Sitsa Ahmet. He was 60 years old. Now, Esau, Esau became a skillful hunter. Esau, now we learn in this particular Sabbath portion, you understand, this reading and feeding for this present sabbatical, six sabbatical um, um, Shabbat Torah portion tilde, or tolodet, toldot, toldot, if you will, that Esau was a skillful hunter, and he was an outdoorsman. He was outdoorsy. He was out there. You know, he'd be about it. You know, he, would, he basically like ran the streets, in other words. But Yaiko, but Jacob, he remained a mild man and camp bound. So, so Jacob was a mild mannered soul. He was a mild mannered one, and he was um, camp bound, according to Genesis chapter twenty five and twenty seven. Here says, "Belate no chum adegu, aisawimma aden yemi yawik a yebraha so hone ya ikobagin." Chimita so nebre Bedin kwan Bedin nima yik emet a nebber. Bamarinya more would translate that he was serious. It says chimit, uh, that he was like to say almost like more serious in that sense. 
by comparison to his um, sporting brother, Esau, who was always out there hunting and outdoorsmen. Now, the father, Yishak, our patriarch, he favored Esau for his game, for, for, for what he hunted, you understand, know what, what he brought back. But Aribaka, the mother now, check this out, the mother, she favored Yaakov, the other brother. So they were, these were twins, but the, each of the parents had their particular favorite. Now, this is Genesis 25 and 28 now. Once when Yaakov was cooking, Esau, he returned to the camp. He returned to the camp. He was famished. And he demanded some of Yaakov's kawet, some of his red stew. And there's such a stew in Ethiopia. In fact, it is said to be one of the more favorites, even at the Ethiopian uh, um, restaurants. It's, it's said to be one of the favorites of even those who um, uh, like exotic food or Ethiopian food in particular, the K-what. The K means red, and the what is a type of a, a type of a stew or a type of a sauce, you can say, um, uh, uh, some say lentil, some say made from the lentil, and actually it, it tells us this in, in the text, Bamarinya, this is Genesis 25, verses 29 to 30. Now, Yaakov also had a, a demand. You see, when he came along, it was a demand. And he says, okay, if, I, if you want me to give you what you demand, then I got a demand too. And Yaakov, he demanded that Esau first sell him his birthright. And Esau did so with an oath. He, with an oath. Esau, he took an oath. And he spurned his birthright according to Genesis chapter 25, verses 31 to 34. And this is very, very interesting. This is very interesting to consider what's here. So let's just go to the King James for a moment. And let's try to do... A, a side by side, a side by side um, comparison, a side by side verse by verse um, comparison. So we're going to begin with um, the sale of the birthright, and from verse 27 in the King James version, Genesis, and verse um, 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 20, or actually Haya Haya uh, Sabbat. Bamarinya Beorita Zefit Aret Miraf Haya Amis 25, chapter 25, Kuter Haya Sebat or the feet. It says, um, Bela Teno Chum Adego, a Saum Madena Yemiawik, a Yeberaha so Hone, Yaik O Begina Chimita so a Nebere, Bedina Quanema Yemet a Neber. Now, we had read that before, but this is where we'll begin. And the boys grew, and the boys grew, or the lads grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. And it says, a man of the field. He played the field. Or one of a man of the wilderness is more literal, according to the King of Kings. And Yaakov was a, it says, plain, plain man. Yaakov again, a chimita so never. And, and, um, chimit. Chimit is serious, right? Yeah, yeah, chimit is just, just checking, just checking. You know, I just because it's interesting how it means one thing here. We get a we get a a detail that's left out here because if you read here. Oh, you just plain. So that means uh, uh, Esau was more like colorful in a sense. But no, it really said that he was more serious. So we learn w that hunting wasn't like they make it seem to be, but we really see what it is in a better clarity according to the King of Kings. It says, Bedin Kwanema Yikemet Neber dwelling in tents or in the tent 
he sat or he would sit in the tent. And it says, Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Ya'ikob. Yishak ima Esauina yued nebera. Kadenoa yibella nebera Rebekah again. Ya'ikob ina tewed neberech. So they both love one is explains why, you know, um, he would eat from what he hunted. That's what I mean when he he loved his he loved game. Kadano uh, yibella yibella neberna that from what he hunted, you know, what I'm saying he did he did eat of it don't say venison in that sense, but he ate of what he hunted. In other words, and and Yaakov sod pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was famished. Yaikovimma weta sera, Esauimma dekomoa kabereha geba. So it says here, Bamarinya, that that Yaikov he made wet, he made wet. Yaikovimma wet sera. Esau women, Esau dekamo, um, being tired, kaberaha geba, from the wilderness, he, he, he entered, he entered, he entered in. Verse 30, and Esau said to Yaiko, feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Therefore was his name called Adam. I saw Wima Yaikovin Kazia Kakeyueta Ablany Nejig Dekme Aluhuna Alo Selezi Sumu Edom Tebale. Because of this, so this does this mean that he must have did this a lot. It almost implies not that one day, you don't say like, oh, one day he came in. You know what I'm saying? One day he came in from the witch gun. This has happened one day. But this is what Esau would do all the time. You know what I'm saying? Would do all the time. And there's another key thing that's interesting too. It doesn't really say that Yaakov, that Jacob ate of the venison. You know what I'm saying? All the, all the debtors. That, that Jacob really didn't eat of the debtors or come to Esau and say, Esau, give me what you're eating. Or he would go out there, hunt, eat his food, and not maybe share it, but always will be eating, you understand, know and coming in with the same story. That's, that's what you, when you begin to meditate on it, you begin, some, you begin to see some interesting psychological and other aspects there that really help us to recognize ourselves and our neighbor at the same time, at one and the same time. Now, verse 31 says, And Yaakov said, Sell me this day thy birthright. You know, because you keep coming to me. You're the older brother. I'm the younger brother. You came out first. I had to grab your heel. You better leave me behind, but you're the older brother, and you're always coming to me, asking me for, for, for what I'm, for I'm eating, and perhaps, like I said, the, the non-sharing aspects and some of that, it, I, I think it's, it's kind of implied there when we read it in its proper in its proper context. So Kut era Salasa and in the Milo Yaikobim the Majamaria the Korana Hina Shitaling Alo. In other words, the Majamaria firstly or by beginning in the you know in the beginning your birthright sell shitaling shit sell le for me, the Kurnahin, the Kurnahin, sell me your birthright, is what Yaakov had said. Now, Esau said, Behold, I am at the point of dying, nigga. What profit shall this birthright do to me? He's like, Yo, I'm about to die, man. I'm about to die. What are you talking about, birthright, man? I just want something to eat, man. What are you talking about, birthright? You want birthright? Yo. Yeah, birthright yours. You know, that was the more or less the attitude that spiritually we're able to discern. Esau Wim and Esau in the whole in the lemotning. Let me not. 
They may not Allah. You know, that he says this. And it's interesting also that he said, but it didn't say that he said to him. It didn't say Allah. It says Allah, that he just said it out. You know, I was like, you're like, man, what's, what's this birthright? You know, what is this to me? You understand? And Ya'ikob, and Ya'ikob said, swear to me this day. That, and he swear to him, and he sold his birthright to Ya'ikob. And he sold his birthright to his brother. Now, here it says, um, verse 33, Salasa saw us, Ya'ikob, Bemiski, Bemajamaria Malalim. Uh, low. See, you will notice there's a difference with how Esau is speaking. You know, when you study, as they say, like those who study Shakespeare, for example, and, and, they, and they really get into it and, and, and they see that Shakespeare had a good understanding of the psychology of people and these issues in life, when you really start to study the Mets of so just, just even study the Bible. Even in the language that you're firstly most familiar with, you begin to understand there's, there's more layers to it. There's the half of the story that you need to be able to disclose and, and unfold. So here he replies to him and swear to me, you know, make a, in other words, like make an oath to me and says, um, and he made an oath. Because that he, he sold. He sold his, his birthright. Verse 34, to complete the chapter, Then Ya'ikob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. Not just a what. He gave him bread, too. He gave him bread with this. Now, some people say, oh, that was nothing. Just give your brother food and stuff like that. But you're not overstanding. You're not putting it into his proper context. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. He, he, for, for, for one meal, think about this for a moment, because it's a deeper teaching. This is just the basic, this is like the first level of, of the reasoning, you understand, on this particular sabbatical portion. And then as you study the scripture and see the context of the Esau type, you understand? And then there's the Ya'ikov type. Now, is Jacob, people say innocent? No, Jacob, Jacob sinned. Jacob made some, some, some errors, you know, some errors for sure. You understand? But he recognized that and he made that correction, that amendment. So that's also an example for us because Ya'ikov would get his name changed to Yishroel or Israel. He would get his name changed to Israel. They have that new name. As I and I in Rastafari also have that new name. So to complete this this, this uh, last verse, it says Ya'ikobim le Aisau and Jerana ye miserweta seto bella teta tenestom heide in dihum Aisau abekurnawin ag alalat ag alalat. Now, it's interesting because the birthright is mentioned as a feminine thing. In the context of the Met of Caduce, that the birthright is mentioned in a feminine or a female context. Now, that as well, there's important degrees that we need to understand in the full knowledge, the epigenosis of the King of Kings and his Christ. So stay tuned, y'all will, and then the next part of this Shabbatical reading and feeding, we'll be able to touch on that as well. Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam.